Remember, Dalla Omar was still in practice um, as an advocate at the Cape Bar uh, before he went to UWC. And so for us it was also extremely significant that Dalla was uh, chosen or whether he had volunteered or whether he had been deployed to the position of heading up the Community Law Centre at the University of the Western Cape. It also became an important home base for many of those who had returned from exile with a legal background. What we as activists understood was that the Community Law Centre was going to play an important role in preparing the groundwork for the drafting of the new constitution. But the most significant issue around the Bill of Rights was what rights would it contain? And crucially, would it be in the civil and political rights, the right to vote, the right to privacy, the right to <coughs> human dignity, the classic civil political rights. But more importantly, introduced in those debates was the inclusion of socio-economic rights and cultural rights in the Constitution. And the Community Law Center in the debates and, the, and in the uh, uh, colloquiums and in discussions and the conversations began to place socio-economic rights very, very firmly on the agenda of South Africans as having to be included in a Bill of Rights. Very significant. One of the crucial issues was in the debates about the new constitution was the constitutional court. Should we have a constitutional court or should the constitution be adjudicated finally by the existing courts in South Africa? And that was a significant debate uh, that the Community Law Center had raised with lawyers. So Dallas crucial role in the TRC must, must, must never be underestimated. And in fact, many of us debated with Dalla. Uh, we put on our, our Nadal hats and we said to, we debated with Dalla and we said, should we really be giving amnesty to people who have committed cross violations of human rights? Could we really be expected in this very short and limited process to herald a process of reconciliation. But the biggest question that we asked them, which still concerns us even today, but many, many years after the TRC, is that has the truth been heard? Has the truth been uncovered? And Dalla was very careful and very clear in ensuring that we understood and accepted that the TRC was a process not without limitations. It was a political process as part of a transition and always reminded us that for those of us who argue that there should be prosecutions, there should be Nuremberg type trials for those who had committed cross human rights violations, Dalla was the one to remind us and say our victory in bringing about a democratic dispensation in South Africa has been through negotiations. It hasn't been a victory by the ANC as a vanquisher over the National Party or, its, or anybody else who was in support. It was a negotiated pact. It was a negotiated settlement. And crucially, compromises had to be made. And much of those compromises were encompassed in the whole notion of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And then, of course, you must remember, as the first Minister of Justice of a democratic South Africa, he, was, he had the task of not dealing with one Ministry of Justice uh, in 1994. He had the old South African Ministry of Justice. And then there were these old uh, Bantustan countries, so-called, that had their own Ministries of Justice and their administrations. And so the big challenge for Dalla as the minister and his department was to be able to bring all these different ministries of justice together. And then of course 
Part of the challenge of the Dalla Omar ministry was to deal with the rationalization of the courts. Uh, because you had the High Court of Venda and the High Court of Baputatswana and the High Court of Siskai and their appeal courts, all of that now had to be streamlined into a South African legal court hierarchy. I'm not saying that Dalla did not put in place the foundational thinking and the need for transformation, I'm just saying it. He had failed to put us to a timeline and that allowed us then to drag it out for the better part of 20 years. Not to the detriment of the legal profession, but I think to the detriment of ordinary South Africans who expected of the legal profession to transform itself so that justice becomes more accessible for them. It was an exciting change because um, Nico Staitler was proved to be a wonderful and a tremendous leadership for, for the centre, was able to pick up on the foundation the work of the community law centre uh, that Dalla had laid and had built significantly on it and it also made it turn it into an extremely rigorous research uh, facility at the university and also an important advocacy centre in civil society um, based on good and solid research. Um, I remember the chair of the, of the uh, Community Law Centre at every AGM, Professor Renfrew Christie, uh, <clears throat> with his characteristic red tie and black blazer, or black suit, would say, how proud he as Dean of Research at UWC would look at the work and consider the work of the Community Law Centre with a sense of pride and accomplishment. So when the Community Law Centre makes submissions in Parliament, we are confident that it's always taken seriously. And that's because of the calibre of research and the calibre of the people in our, in our committees who, who go and make those submissions. But the Community Law Centre did more than that. It also got involved in litigation around the socio-economic rights and was a keen and was a, one of the key litigants um, and participants in the celebrated case of Grootboom uh, that dealt with the right of access to housing. Did all the research, we had the debates and I remember staff of the community law centre would come around to law firms and to Nadal we'd have workshops debating uh, the Grootboom issues and the Grootboom judgment. And it was an extremely important role that the Community Law Centre began to play as from 1994 up until as it continues to play in litigation uh, even now. The Community Law Centre and I think every organisation in civil society in South Africa's greatest concern must be that of service delivery. Every day in this country, there are service delivery protests. So something is going wrong. And somebody's not doing their job. Or somebody doesn't understand their job. Or somebody is misusing their job and misusing important and limited state resources for other purposes than for which it is intended for. And so this challenge of delivering of basic services as promised in the Constitution to the most vulnerable people of South Africa must be the preoccupation of not only the Community Law Centre but of every organ of civil society in South Africa and not only civil society, but also of parliament. But we need to build and to give people dignity. 
And if I can live in a house, and I suspect you also live in a house, then why should thousands of other South Africans not also have? It's not a luxury. The simple necessity of living in a house with a secure roof, with running water, hot water, with a decent toilet, running toilet, with bath facilities and the privacy of bedrooms and also the ability to, as a family, live with a dining room and a kitchen. We're not asking for much. This is one of the richest countries on the continent. To the Dalla Omar Institute. We have another 21 years to make your mark on the history of this country. Um, so we don't live in the past, we don't live in pre-94 and we're not going to live in pre-2014. Um, we're going to deal with the challenges of, of, of 2015 and the next 21 years and I'm confident that the Community Law Centre is going to be around for a long, long time in this country uh, and it's going to continue to do the most amazing work it's continued to attract the most amazing staff, people with a tremendous amount of commitment, a social commitment, a commitment to uh, human rights, a commitment to changing and bettering the lives of their fellow human beings. Uh, that's the kind of people that it attracts. It makes, it makes very, very, very seriously caring human beings. That's what the Community Law Centre transforms. People who come and work there for six months or a year, their lives change. They become better, better academics, better researchers, but more importantly, they become better human beings. And for that, I, I've been absolutely and completely privileged to have been part of the Community Law Centre over these past many years. Um, it's something which I thoroughly enjoyed and uh, I certainly hope to assist the Community Law Centre in the next hours and many years they still need me to, to assist. Mm -hmm.